Hello guys, hope you have been having a very lovely day. In this video, let us see what K-maps are. Let me tell you this thing beforehand that K-maps are also called Cornog maps. And these maps are actually a simpler way of uh, uh, reducing the given, bull, uh, the given expression. So when you have a big, 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 big expression, then finding out the table, the truth table, writing it all down, and and then simplifying it with the help of the Boolean laws which you have, that is going to be a very tedious process. So that is where K maps jump in from. So a K map or Cornog map are uh, consist of cells. So they have cells or boxes as you can call them and the number of cells is 2 power n where n is the number of variables. For example, we are finding out, we are uh, simplifying the Boolean expression which is actually being given in terms of x and y which means we have two terms which means we have two variables so the Cornog map or K map is going to have four cells or four boxes for example we have a b c three variables it means we have two power three which is equal to eight cells or eight boxes so with the help of Cornog maps we can simplify these boolean expressions easily rather than using those boolean laws and uh, following a number of steps in solving so let us uh, see how we can use the k-maps to simplify these boolean expressions. So I have paused it a bit and so that I could just write down the truth table. The truth table is on the left. X, Y and Z are the variables. So now if I should write it down. So wherever there is logic 1 that is in the f part where f is a function wherever there is logic 1. I am going to write down those uh, uh, that specific combinations are down and I'm going to solve it that is f is 1 here and here and here so I'll have to write x bar y bar plus z which is for this one plus x plus y bar plus z which is for this one and x plus y plus z bar which is for the third one and then I'll have to use my boolean laws to simplify it instead of that k maps or Carnot maps are very very simple and I can simplify this table at, like at the back of my hand so all you need to do is now that we have three variables we have two power three that is eight boxes so you have eight boxes in, on the right hand side got it right so you're going to write x here on the left and yz on the right so zero one zero 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 one 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 zero remember after 0, 0 came 0, 1. After 0, 1 came 1, 1. Why? We are following a gray code here. And you remember what a gray code is. And if you don't remember what a gray code is, just look for my other video. A gray code is where you have to where you have to change only one digit, only one bit from the previous number. So if you have 0, 0, you, uh, you can write 0, 1. But you can, after 0, 1, you can't write 1, 0 because that is a change of two bits. So a gray code ensures um, the secure security and it protects the uh, uh, data from loss of bits. So that is what a gray code is used for. And I have used gray code in writing down the uh, um, uh, respective boxes so now I have x is equal to 0 and for the respective y and z is equal to 0 that is for 0 0 0 my output is 0 for 0 0 1 for 0 0 1 that is the second one my output is 1 for 0 1 1 for 0 1 1 my output is 0 for 0, 1, 0, my output is 0 again. And now, for 1, 0, 0, my output is 0. For 1, 0, 1, for 1, 0, 1, which is this one, my output is 1. And for 1, 1, 0, for 1, 1, 0 is the rightmost, bottom right. The output is 1.
and for 1, 1, 1, it is 0. So now let us see how we are going to simplify this with k maps instead of the normal Boolean loss. So I'm, uh, the easiest, I'll just put it to you this way. You just look at your k map. Are there any adjacent ones? Any adjacent ones? So you can find adjacent ones here. These are adjacent to each other. So, those two ones, in these two ones, which terms are common for you? For example, in these two terms, in this term and this term, which variable is common? Like, in this term, in the first one, x is 0, but in the next term, x is 1. So, x is not common. So, eliminate x. And coming to y, and coming to y, y is 0 in the top and 0 in the bottom. And also, z is 0 in the top and 0 in the bottom. So, for these two terms, yz is common. So, f is equal to yz plus, hold it right there. Now you have another one here. Forget about all the zeros. Don't even think about them when you're solving in this method. You're considering ones, consider ones. There is another way in which you need to consider zeros, but that is a totally different implementation. So now you have another one. Are there any adjacent ones to that one? No. So what do you do for that? You are going to write down the entire name of the term, which is Sorry, uh, this is y bar, right? y bar z. The first one was y is 0, right? What, do, what does it mean when, uh, when y is 0? It means that the term is y bar. So y bar z is the function. Is f is equal to y bar z plus something. So now coming to the third one. What is the name of the term? x is 1, y is 1, z is 0. So you are going to write it as x, y, z bar. So that is your function. Now substitute any value in this and you will get the truth table. Let us take in, uh, let us consider the second one. X and Y are 0. So Y bar is 1, which means F is 1. 1 plus 0 is 1. So you got this. You can even verify it for the other two. So in this way, if you had to solve it using boolean loss, tell me how you, you how you would have done it. You would have written the name of this term, this term, this term, and then used those laws like a bar plus a, a a bar is something, a plus a bar is something. All those laws you would have used, and you would have taken much much more time. So using k maps, you can reduce the time you're going to take to a great extent. So that is why k maps or Cornog maps are used. So. Uh, and one more thing I want to tell you is K maps are suitable only if um, there are up to some five or four variables. Beyond that, uh, the size of the map is going to increase drastically and it's going to be pretty difficult for you on a sheet. But in most of the situations, we, have, uh, we are going to have less than that, so we use K maps. So let me let me just tell you uh, how adjacent ones are taken into consideration because in the example I have taken that it is not just enough. Let me just tell you some other uh, a big case. I'm not taking a question, but I'm telling you how to consider adjacent ones and how to write the respective outputs. I have taken 16 box. I have taken one, two, three, four, five boxes. Uh, 5 into 4, 20 boxes, which in no way will be a proper K map. So I will erase one so that I'll get 16 boxes, which means I have four variables, which means I have four variables. So I have these four variables. I'm going to write down the uh, 1, uh, 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. 0, 0, oh, 0, 0, 1, 1. So, let me tell you that you have an entire independence to choose which adjacent ones you want. 
For example, I have these two adjacent ones. I have these two adjacent ones. Remember, when you're considering two adjacent terms, you are just writing down the common variables in that and putting them out in the function. If there are four ones, you can pair two ones, you can pair four ones, you can pair in powers of two. You can pair like that and find out the common terms and put them out. For example, in some cases, when you are pairing four ones, there might be only one variable common. For example, x, x y bar, z bar plus x, x, y, z. You might only get out x out of it. So, uh, in uh, there are many out of four terms you are picking up. Sometimes you might get only one variable. So, just forget everything. Pair adjacent ones of 2, 4, 8 and so on. And then write down the common, the common variables, pick them out and put them in the function. That's it. So now I'm telling you how to pick up adjacent ones. This is one. This is one. Also, you can pick up. I'm just telling you. You can pick up this one and this one. If there are, that is also one way of picking up of adjacent ones. You can pick up this one and this one. Those two are also adjacent ones. You can also pick up this one and this one. You can pick up this and this and this and this. It is your wish. It is up to you how to pick up. So, just see that every one will get paired. Every one. When this one is alone here, you can pair it with this even though it is already paired. Even though it one, one is already paired, you can still pair it with some other one if, if the other one is not paired. For example, all the ones are paired and still a few ones are pairable. But they are already paired, which means you are un if you are pairing them again and again, you are just creating nuisance. Just see that all the ones get paired. And if any one is unpayable, then you can do nothing about it. You will have to write down the entire label of the variable and put it there. But if there are payable ones, pair them. If there are already paired ones and there can be nothing else uh, you can do to pair uh, some unpaid ones to them, just don't do anything and don't create a lengthy problem there. So this is how you are going to simplify uh, any function using kmaps. So I hope you found this informative and helpful. If you have an exam tomorrow, all the very, very best. Thank you and have a lovely day.